Figma is every designer's bread and butter. It's the best tool for everything design related. I've seen people have gotten so used to Figma that they even type letters and make presentations directly on Figma. Well, typing letters might be a stretch, but there's not an iota of doubt that Figma is the tool when it comes to anything around digital experience design. It has a huge plugin library that gives designers everything they want, and you can even create high fidelity prototypes and collaborate seamlessly with your teammates. Now, why do you think I'm talking about a tool? Aren't there many other important things to learn about design? Yes, of course. But you see, we humans tend to think about the biggest problem in our lives. And when you are designing, the biggest problem should be the problem statement that you're attempting to solve and nothing else. If you're not fully comfortable with your tool, Figma in this case, there's a great chance that you'll end up spending time thinking, oh, how do I make this on Figma? How do I create a soft shadow? How do I change this without disturbing the rest of the UI? And so on. Whereas you should be thinking about your problem statement and give your full attention to that. And that's exactly why you should master Figma so that these trivial questions never bother you when you're at work. Figma is a simple tool to learn, but mastering it in 2024 is all the more difficult, confusing, and at the same time, necessary. With tons of courses and too many YouTube videos, it might be getting difficult for you to decide where to begin. But I've got your back. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete step-by-step -step guide that you can use to master Figma. I'm also going to share with you some free resources and even a free course that will make your learning process even easier. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's get started. Step one. First things first, before learning any new tool, you need to get familiar with the user interface. After all, it's the only place you'll spend most of your time from now on, right? Start with the basics. Navigate through different sections on the dashboard and get to know how Figma works. By clicking on the design file button located on the top right corner of your dashboard, you will reach your main editing area. Here you will see different sets of tools that are required in design process. I'll be giving you the necessary details about each tool later in this video. Go through every menu item thoroughly and understand its functionality. Learn how to add frames to your canvas and how you can export and save frames and files. Learn how to pan, zoom in, zoom out, move, what clicking does, what double clicking does. How can your mouse or trackpad actions be combined with your keyboard to do something? You can also explore their community page to get inspired from pre-designed templates and learn how can you reuse them in your own designs. Once you're familiar with the interface, it's time to to move on to step two. So step two is learn the basic tools. The best part about learning Figma is that it's easy to use tools. You don't need to have any prior design experience to start using them. You will be surprised to know that Figma has only three elements using which you can design almost anything in this world. The three elements are shape, image, and text. That's it. Well, if you actually look closer, shape and image are the same because in Figma, image is nothing but a shape filled with an image as fill instead of a color. So that actually makes it two elements. You can draw shapes using presets like the rectangle, ellipse, polygon, stars, or lines, or you can use a pen tool or the pencil tool to draw something more organic. More than 90% of the times, you'll see yourself using the rectangle tool. Once you've drawn a shape, you can do a lot of things to it. You can add a fill color, fill gradient, fill image, add a stroke, control its thickness, add a color or a gradient to it, add rounded corners, cut the shape open, you can do everything. Now, if you see whatever I said in the last 30 seconds about shape, are probably the things you do on Figma 90% of the times. Maybe now you can pause this video, rewind 30 seconds and make a note of them. Make sure you're comfortable doing all those things that I mentioned in the last 30 seconds or so. If you have any doubts around the shapes, Google them or let us know in the comments so that we can help each other. Step three, framing. By clicking on the third icon located at the top right corner of your toolbar, the frame tool lets you choose a frame for your design. It sets the base of your design. You can choose from a variety of presets, keeping in mind your design need. In Figma, you can create frame within other frames as well. This process is called nesting. It's very useful when you're building complex interfaces. For example, when you have to put a large number of objects together and you want to create one manageable layer. Most designers would use group function, which is okay, I use it too. But you should know the difference between a frame and a group. Group, as the name suggests, is a folder or a collection of multiple things inside. It doesn't have its own structure or dimensions. It takes the dimensions of the contents that you put inside it. On the other hand, a frame is almost everything that a group is, but it also has its own structure. The frame has its own dimensions, which you'll have to set while creating it. This dimension remains constant unless you manually change it, no matter what the contents are. Meaning, if the contents of a frame are larger than the frame itself, you will only see the contents which are within the size of the frame. That's why frames are also used for masking elements by using the clip content option. Frames also behaves like shapes. That is, you can add a fill, color, stroke, shadows, and grids to a 
per frame. Another difference between groups and frames is constraints. Constraints work in frames, but not in groups. That is, when you put everything inside a frame, you will have the option to correctly set the relationship between the objects, spacing, and the frames. Figma will apply these constraints accordingly and will not break the design. Now, we have already spoken a lot about shapes like rectangles, lines, ellipses, arrows, polygons, and stars. Now, these are not any basic shapes. You can modify and resize them into different forms to create your own complex shapes by using multiple of them together or even combining them with the Boolean tools. This is very helpful if you're designing icons and illustrations on Figma. There's also a common tool that helps you make design decisions faster. Through it, you can chat with your fellow designers, get feedback and suggestions on your designs. It's an effective tool for professionals and product designers. Check out this playlist on Figma where they have talked about every tool in detail. Step four, get started with Figma's two most important features, auto layout and prototyping. Auto layout is a feature that allows you to structure your components and frames in a way that can automatically grow or shrink adapting to the size of your content. Shift plus A is the shortcut to enable auto layout. Now look at this card. How is it able to shrink and expand flexibility with its contents? This is because the auto layout feature. The auto layout has different properties like direction, spacing, padding, alignment, resizing and constraints. Each of them play a crucial role in your overall design. The card that I showed you earlier, padding, which gives its elements room to breathe and allow them to stand out. Spacing refers to the gap between the items. You can either set it to auto or if you can enter a specified value into the field. Elements get aligned automatically when an auto layout is applied to them but what is more interesting is that it is not restricted to just one position. If the gap between them is set to auto then it gives you three options for each direction and if the gap between them is set to a specific number you get nine options for each direction. In this way you can control the alignment of your design in whichever way you want. Direction is simply putting your design layout horizontally or vertically. Check out this playlist to learn about the application of auto layout in your designs. I've attached the link of them in the description box below. But here's a warning. Always know when and how to use auto layout. There are people out there in the internet who suggest that you should use auto layout for everything. That's sheer stupidity. Don't do that. <laughs> auto layout should be used only when you need the automatic adjustment of layouts in your UI. The stuff that I just demonstrated. If not, do not use it because it adds a layer of extra complexity to your Figma frames and not a forget, making layout changes to an auto layout is also relatively more complicated. Even if you say want to reduce the spacing between two elements once an auto layout is added, you can't simply drag and do it. You'll have to do it using the tools and the numbers on the right side panel. Warning number two, auto layout is built for your convenience. It has got little to do with design. Knowing auto layout doesn't necessarily make you a great designer. It makes you an efficient designer only if you know how and when to use it. All right, let's talk about prototyping. A prototype is an early sample of a product that is built to test ideas and suggest changes until it resembles the final product. It helps you to visualize what your designs will look like once it is built. For this, Figma offers a great prototyping tool through which you can create interactive user flows and add animations to your prototypes. Figma's inbuilt animation provides you with a lot of choices and choosing appropriate interactions would help your users to easily navigate through your product. You can check out my videos on 10 easy UI animations you can make as a beginner for a detailed tutorial on the same. Moving on to step number five, creating scalable designs. Let me explain it through an example. I have four different cards here, each with a button. Suppose I want to change the color of these buttons to red. What would you do if you were in my situation? Probably you would do that one by one for each button, right? Let me tell you an easier way. Create a component with one button and then use instances of these components in the remaining designs. That way the instances become a child to the parent element, which is the component that you just created. Whatever changes you make to the parent component, it starts reflecting on all the child instances. But if you make any changes to one of the childs, it stays only within that. And you can of course reset it to match the style of the parent component whenever you want. This makes you put less effort and save a lot of time. Through components, you can create reusable elements for your design like design systems. It could be many things like buttons, icons, layouts and more. Variance is just the next step ahead after component and it allows you to group and organize similar components into a single container. Make sure to check out this playlist to learn how to create an effective design system by using components and variants. The link is in the description box below. 
Step number six, explore variables and styles. Now again, let me quickly tell you the basics. Variables are reusable values that store information about a color, text, grid size, row or column count, etc. to be referenced and manipulated later in your design. For example, you can create variables of colors for designing a new website. You can have one section of all the background colors and another section of all the brand colors. But these variables will still lack functionality or intent and they can't be directly used in the design. That's where tokenization comes in. It refers to defining values by referencing other values in your design. It takes the most stress out of your head. This is the perfect example of creating tokens. Check out these videos to learn more about tokenization and variables in depth. And finally, I've saved the best for the last. Free resources. Let's get right into it. Here's a complete list of Figma's best plugins that I've curated just for you. Deck converts your beautiful designs into editable presentations. Artboard Studio mockups has over 10,000 plus real life product mockups that you can access with one click of a button. Responsify quickly tests your designs across different screen sizes to ensure adaptiveness and scalability. With import react icons, you can directly import popular icons into your Figma files. Locofy turns your designs into real websites and apps. Autoflow helps you create interactive user flows for your prototypes. Majestic is an AI generated icon set. It lets you pick high quality and unique icon sets for your designs. Product Planner makes the planning and management of your product easier with its pre-built templates and roadmaps. And for all the certificate collectors, I even have a free course recommendation. Check out Introduction to Figma on uxtoast.com. The course is stretched to four lessons where they'll teach you all about from the very basics and to get a certificate, all you have to do is to submit three screenshots from the tasks related to the course as proof. The link to this course is in the description box. Make sure to check it out. And that was the video. You can also check out this video of mine for another practical step-by-step -step UI design tutorial. And if you're looking for a full roadmap on how to get started as a UX designer, don't forget to check this video. Until next time, this is Sapta. See you all in the next one.